Hello everybody, it's Webby. Uh, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my experiences of driving the awesome BMW M2 this week. Um, it is an absolutely fantastic car. I'm sure you've probably already watched lots of videos about this car. Um, yeah, seeing and driving and yeah, getting to sort of grips with it this week uh, has been absolutely fantastic. Now I'm not going to lie, when I first saw pictures of this new M2, I wasn't a fan of the styling, particularly the rear end styling. It was just kind of very, I don't know, BMW have this thing at the moment, they bring out a car like you know, the current generation M3 and M4, everybody goes on about, oh, it's ugly, the grill was horrible, whatever, whatever. But after sort of six months, a year, we all get used to it, and it's like, oh yeah, there's an M2 or there's an M3, and you kind of don't think anything of it. And that's exactly what you know my thoughts were about this car before I got it. Um, so yeah, but anyway, this is going to be the review of um, yeah living with the M2 for the week. Um, I'll give my conclusions at the end, and uh, yeah, you can you can understand what I think about the car. But anyway, let's get started. We'll have a look around the car, a um, bit about the outside, inside engine, that type of stuff. Uh, then obviously go for a little bit of a drive. So sit tight and enjoy the M2 review with me. So first of all then, and most importantly, is the engine which makes this an M car. So underneath the bonnet, we've got a inline six twin turbo three litre petrol engine, uh, code S58 for all you BMW fans out there. Um, output is 338 kilowatt and 550 newton meters of torque. This particular car has got the six speed manual gearbox. Um, so zero to 100 kilometers an hour is 4.3 seconds. So it lags slightly behind the eight speed auto, but only by 0.2 of a second. Rear wheel drive, obviously. Um, the color is called Zandvoort Blue. So this is the hero color for the new M2. Um, and again, when pictures I'd seen looking online and bits and pieces like that, it was like, mm, not really sure about the color. But when you see it in person, or if you see it driving by, it looks fantastic and it really, really suits the look of this car. Um, if I was going to buy one, I'd have it in this spec. I'd have an auto gearbox, obviously. Um, but I actually do like these black wheels as well. These are one of the options of wheels you can have. Um, there's a few different choices. Um, but yeah, there's fully gloss black wheels, really suit the blue paintwork, uh, and just have that really nice contrast going on. Uh, in terms of specification, this particular car has got a pack, uh, which gives you the carbon bucket seats, more of that uh, a little bit further into the video. Um, it costs fourteen and a half thousand dollars, which is really expensive. Uh, but you also get two track days as well with BMW. Um, something that would be, a, you know, if you own this type of car, it would be absolutely fantastic. So yeah, M2 manual gearbox, got the bucket seats, which we'll talk a bit more as we go around the car. Um, but yeah, first impressions in terms of looks, I think it looks fantastic. So it's actually the back of the M2 which caused the most controversy when pictures of it first appeared online. People really hated this sort of back design here with this kind of squared angular look to the rear bumper. But again, it's one of those things that when you see it in person and the more you get used to seeing it, actually, it's not a bad design. The thing I really do like about the back of this car is how much the rear of the car is flared out to accommodate these 20 inch wheels at the back of the car. You can almost see kind of like the line here where a normal, normal sort of two series would be. And you've got this whole sort of extra width, this big bulging kind of muscle, if you like, um, just to fit those massive 20 inch wheels. But it also means that the back of the car blends round to the rear and actually sort of blends in quite nicely. Uh, four massive exhausts at the back of the car, uh, which make an absolutely fantastic sound as well, particularly if you put it in sports mode. Um, but yeah, overall, I do like the back of this car now. I really didn't when I first saw the pictures, but now, I'm really, really sold on the looks of it. I've got to say, it is a fantastic looking car. The blue with the black wheels is such a good combination. Now you don't buy an M2 because of its carrying capacity. This is a sports car after all, but it has got a fairly decent amount of boot space. I've actually just finished moving house over the last few days and the amount of stuff I managed to cram into the boot of the M2 was actually quite impressive. The whole back of the car was full, the whole interior of the car was full. I actually managed to carry quite a lot from my old house to my new house. Um, so yeah, in terms of boot space, it's actually pretty decent. The other thing I do like um, that's been added to this car is I do like these heritage badges that BMW have nowadays. Um, I think it's just a bit more than just your traditional you know, BMW badge. 
um, and just sort of lifts it a little bit and makes it look a little bit different. So yeah, I do like these new heritage badges. I think the spoil on the back could possibly benefit from being carbon fibre as opposed to body coloured. I don't know if that's an option you can have, um, but I think that would tie in quite nicely. Uh, maybe with sort of the gloss black sections at the bottom of the car, you could have it in gloss black, I suppose. Um, but yeah, just something to sort of make it look a bit different. Um, but I guess if you want to be subtle, you could have this little one here. Um, if you're buying an M2, you're not being subtle, though, really, are you? So just before we get to the inside of the car, I'll tell you a little story that happened to me this morning on the way to filming. I pulled out my driveway in the M2, obviously, and about 100 metres up the road, a red Ferrari 458 Spider came the opposite way. As we passed each other, we both looked. He obviously knew that he was looking at an M2. I knew it was a Ferrari. And uh, we exchanged these glances of both, wow, what a cool car. Um, I did a bit of a double back and uh, found him parked in a car park at the local shopping centre uh, and stopped and had a bit of a chat with him. Uh, and he was like, wow, what a cool car. I said, obviously, exactly the same. But it was just nice that you know, him driving a Ferrari 458 appreciated how cool and awesome the M2 is. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show what an impressive car this is from BMW. Um, so before we get inside, if you are like enjoying this video, don't forget to like, also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell uh, because there's plenty more videos coming this year, not just with BMW, but some other bits and pieces as well. So let's jump inside, have a look around and I'll show you those bucket seats I mentioned earlier. Right, so we've gone handheld, we're going to walk around the car. Uh, keyless entry, obviously. The more you see this colour, the better it gets. It's just so, so impressive. Uh, right, anyway, inside, these are the aforementioned bucket seats I told you about. When you first open the door and you see them, you think, God, they look good. Um, but let me tell you, they are difficult to get in and out of. Uh, I'll show you a little clip in a second of me trying to get out of the car. Um, it is not fun. Definitely for a lady wearing a skirt, absolute no-no. Because, -no. Um, um, yeah, it wouldn't be very pleasant or uh, ladylike for sure. Um, but in terms of the actual seats themselves, you can say the carbon fibre all down the back here. You've got the carbon fibre sort of support bit there in the middle. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second too. Um, and then you've got this really highly bolstered sides, again with more carbon fibre just down the side there. Electric adjustment, uh, plus a button there, you can also adjust the bolsters uh, on the sides of the seats. Uh, you've also got the blue and the red sort of BMW M coloured uh, sort of sections there on the seats. Uh, and also the M2 logo that lights up as well, which is quite cool. Um, the general layout of the car uh, is pretty sort of standard 2 series, but with lots of carbon fibre. Uh, you do get the nice little sort of blue flashes there on the side, but I've also seen those on again on uh, an M240. Uh, you've got the standard Harman Kardon sound system, which again is also superb. Um, but yeah, let's now jump inside uh, and actually show you a little bit more around the cabin. So here we are on the interior of the M2. Uh, as I said, it's very sort of traditional sort of two series in here. We do have the new larger screen that we saw in uh, sort of the M3 that I had last week, plus also other new models coming out now. There's literally one piece of glass that goes all the way from the instrument cluster here, all the way to the infotainment screen over there. It's a really impressive setup, uh, but I'd hate to have to replace that piece of glass because that would be seriously expensive. Um, but anyway, in terms of the actual driving position, uh, very, very good. You've got this nice leather steering wheel here. We've got the M1 and the M2 buttons there, so you can um, also you pre-select your, your save driving modes and you can tailor them. Uh, actually, if you look at the display there, this is how um, you can actually tailor things and what you can tailor. So you can have the engine, you can have the gearbox, suspension, steering and brakes. Uh, you can change them all between efficient slash comfort to sport and sport plus. Uh, and that's what you can save uh, on your M1 and your M2 buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, so fully configurable. Uh, to exactly how you want it to be, which is quite cool. Um, also like the bits of carbon here uh, and all around the steering wheel. The steering wheel is also heated as well, which is quite cool. Uh, but again, you've also got the, the BMW M stitching just on the inside of the steering wheel, 
uh, another M badge there as well. Uh, wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, which is great because I love that. Uh, also wireless phone charging too. Uh, more carbon fiber across here on the top of the dash uh, and all the way across to the other side on the passenger. Plus this lovely sort of satin silver finish as well, which is quite cool. Uh, everything is now touchscreen, apart from literally a couple of buttons just down here, uh, plus the volume for the radio. Uh, there's a couple of cup holders, a USB-A and a 12 volt socket uh, just down there underneath. And in this little door, it just closes that so you get more carbon fibre, uh, which looks very, very nice. Uh, as I said outside, this one's got the six-speed manual gearbox. Um, I haven't driven a manual for a long time, probably since the i30N. Um, I don't mind a manual. Uh, I personally would go for the 8-speed auto in this car, just for a, a bit more everyday usability. Um, but yeah, the manual is still good fun. Uh, and then you've got your normal buttons there for parking sensors, stop-start for the engine, the actual ignition. Uh, and then the buttons where you can set up uh, the M modes and the M1 and M2, plus a button where you can uh, make the exhaust valve open and close. Uh, electric handbrake, traction control off, and then all the controls there for the iDrive system up there on the infotainment screen. Uh, a little bit more of the blue and red stitching as well, uh, just around the gear stick, which is quite cool. Uh, and then we open up to a decent amount of storage space uh, under the centre console. There's a USB-C uh, for charging your phone there. The wireless charging pad is actually quite a cool idea. There's the wireless charging pad there. But then you've got this little flap here, which actually keeps your phone in place. Uh, so I guess if you're doing a track day or a bit of spirited driving, uh, your phone will keep charged because it's not flying about under that little storage compartment there, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, there's a bit more of a look at the passenger seat. So you can see uh, how much bolstering we've got there. In the back of the car, I'm not even going to try and sit in there because it's quite small. Um, it's just a two seat configuration. Uh, because in the centre you've just got a little bit of storage there. Uh, but again, it's nice and comfortable back there. Actually probably more comfortable in the front seats if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, not a bad amount of space for the occasional passengers. Right, so talking about the gearbox slash seat situation I mentioned earlier. If you can just see down there, we've got the pedals there, the 6 speed manual. Here we have the clutch on the left. And to engage the clutch, it's, it's fairly heavy and there's a bit of travel before you get the biting point. So if I have to, I have to sit quite close to be able to, to gauge that biting point. The downside to that is where you've got this hump on these bucket seats here in the middle, your leg, as you can probably just see, sits on top of that sort of carbon fibre slash plastic hump. And after a while, it does get quite uncomfortable. Um, I guess that would be okay if you're using this as just a Sunday um, sort of weekend car. But yeah, as you can see, my foot is a long way into that sort of travel there to push the clutch in. But yeah, it gets really uncomfortable on your, on your sort of clutch leg, if you like, um, pushing in to get over this little hump. And for that reason, I personally would get an automatic version of the M2, and I'd stick with the standard sports seats. I wouldn't get these carbon bucket seats, uh, just because for me, it would probably be more of a daily driver car. If it was just a weekend toy, um, yeah, maybe you'd go the bucket seats, maybe you'd go the manual, or you know, a combination of the auto and the bucket seats, maybe. Uh, but for me personally, yeah, I'd, I'd stick with the auto uh, and then I'd go with the standard seats. I'd also then save myself $14,500. The total on road price for this particular car is about $151,000, which sounds a lot of money, um, but you've got to remember the M2 is a very, very special car. And um, once you've driven one, yeah, you kind of understand why it costs so much money. But if you had just a regular auto with standard seats, you're going to be looking at under $140,000, um, which in my mind, that would be the option to go for. Well, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of the exhaust on this M2, because uh, it does sound pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to jump in, give it a bit of a rev. The engine is already warmed up, by the way. Um, and yeah, you can have a listen to the, uh, the exhaust on the M2.
after the exhaust of this car. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Um, but now we're going to take it out for a drive uh, and see what it's like out on the open road. All right, let's go for a drive. Oh, when you're in these seats, they do hold you in well. I have to give them that. Um, but yeah, just that whole sort of clutch, lumpy section in the middle of the seat kind of, um, yeah, it just spoils it a little bit for me personally. All right. It does take a little bit of time adjusting to how the clutch works because there's a little bit of travel before you find the biting point and it is a little there's a little bit of sort of heaviness to it which does make it in stop start traffic quite tiring other than that it's actually a nice car to drive And it is nice that BMW do give the option of having a manual gearbox because everything is going automatic these days so I guess for some people who want a more pure driving experience it is nice you can still get a manual and if it was just your weekend car yeah maybe you'd go the manual but whether I'm getting lazy or whatever I don't know but um, yeah I'll definitely go the auto route So I've just pressed the M1 button on the steering wheel, which I've programmed to have everything, well, certainly the engine and exhaust and everything in Sport Plus mode. And it definitely comes alive. You've got a bit more throttle response. I don't know whether you can hear the engine, but um, the engine is definitely more of an aggressive sound too. I always keep the suspension in comfort though, because if you go anything other than comfort, it does get quite firm. And particularly on the roads around here in Melbourne, uh, as you know, they're probably full of potholes and lumps and bumps and stuff. It can get quite um, uh, uncomfortable. It's quite interesting actually. Last week I had the M3 Touring, and obviously this week I've been driving this M2. I've actually had more attention in the M2 than the M3 Touring. Um, I don't think a lot of people knew what the M3 Touring was. I just probably saw it as a, a 3 series wagon slash estate, whatever you call it, where you're from. Whereas the M2 um, is clearly very different. Aside from making a good noise, the engine is actually really nice. Very torquey, particularly from low down revs. Um, you know, it's got 550 newton meters, so you would expect that to be the case. But yeah, in any gear, you almost just put your foot in the throttle and off it goes. It's, uh, it's a really good um, sort of pickup from the engine. One other draw side to the manual gearbox is because it's only six speeds as opposed to eight on the auto, is when you're sat on the freeway, it obviously revs a little bit higher. Uh, so I'm sat on just over 100 k's an hour, um, and it's probably sitting at about 2,300 revs, somewhere around there. Um, so you can do a little bit of engine noise as opposed to in the 8 speed obviously the revs will be a little bit lower the nice thing is though you don't get a lot of tyre noise coming through to the cabin considering we've got 19 inch wheels at the front and 20 inch wheels at the back with low profile tyres I'm actually quite impressed with how little tyre and road noise comes into the cabin I mean it's not quite 7 series BMW but you know for the type of car it is, it's actually not too bad. You do only get standard cruise control when you've got the manual gearbox. 
as opposed to when you've got the automatic, you get adaptive cruise control. Um, so yeah, just, just another sort of difference between the two. Um, I guess the sort of person that might buy the manual probably isn't bothered by that. Um, so if they're sort of do, using it for track days or just going out having a blast on a Sunday, they probably don't care whether it's got adaptive cruise control or not. So there you have it then. That's my thoughts and opinions on the brand new BMW M2. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've had a fantastic week driving this car. Sadly, I've got to give the keys back now though. Um, but yeah, BMW want their car back. Um, what are my final thoughts and opinions? Yes, I'd buy one if I had the spare money. Um, I'd have the auto, I'd have the standard seats. I probably would have this color combination to be fair. I love the blue with the black wheels. It's just, it just suits the car so, so well. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. So that's the video, hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a like if you have, share it with your friends so they can watch it as well. Subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. There's plenty more coming this year, so keep your eyes peeled. Thanks very much for joining me today, hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.